Hi and welcome back to this tutorial. And today we are going to learn how to integrate our application with Firebase. Within this tutorial, we are going to learn how we can be able to do Firebase authentication and how we can be able to store our data in Firebase, be able to read it, delete it, and update it. As you can see in this demo application that I've created here, we can create an account. For example, I can say this is test1 at gmail.com. We can give password as pass at 1, 2, 3. We can give confirm password as pass at 1, 2, 3. And we can register. As you can see, registration was successful. And now we can proceed and log in. So we can do test one at gmail.com and we have path at one two three and we can log in we have a list of books that have uh, already been stored so basically what we are going to do i can read these ones so now that uh, was the first leg of authentication now for storing data, we have the capability to add books, book one, and we have other one, sorry, other one, and we can add the book. There we see it in a recycler view. Let's add another book. We have book two, other two. And then we add it. There we are. Let's try and edit this book too. And name it book 5. And other 5. Update book. So we have book 5. Other 5. Let's try to search for book 1. Book 1. There it is. And we can also decide to delete it. There we are, we are left only with book 5. I'm also going to show you uh, on the Firebase end how to do the integration and the storage. For example, we can see within the authentication, we created a user called test1 at gmail.com and we stored within the Firebase database. We stored a book record that is out of 5. Let's try to add another book here. We can have book 10. We have other 10. We have book 10 out of the 10. Let's see here. We have book out of the 10, book 10. Let's try to delete this one. Book 5 is deleted. Let's see. We only have book 10. So this is what we are going to create. I will walk you through creating a new Android application, integrating with Firebase, doing authentication, and finally managing crowd, fire, crowd storage. That is creating records, deleting records, updating records, and even leading those records. So let's get started. Now let us begin by creating our new application. Remember, if you want to learn in depth about Android programming, look at the link in the description where you can get my full course at a discounted price. So to create a new application, go to file, then select new project. You will get a list of templates. We are going to use phone and tablet. And the activity we are going to select is an empty activity. So click next. Give your application a name. In this case, I'm going to give this one book manager. The package name is net.lantech.bookmanager. Remember, this is a unique ID that identifies your application. 
then the storage location the language we are going to use kotlin minimum sdk we are going to use is api 21 and then click finish so the process of building a new application takes some time it might take a couple of seconds minutes depending on the power in your machine whether you're using a laptop or desktop so give it a couple of seconds to finish building as you can see here the gradle is still configuring there we are as you can see our project is now ready so this is the project structure here this is uh, where we edit our code and as you can see within the app we have manifest this is where we place our permissions we create things to do with services receivers we have java this is where we place our code that is either kotlin xml here we have less this is where we create non-code files like xml we create things to do with images and colors styles themes then we have gradle scripts this is where we declare the libraries that are used within the project i have a full course explaining all these and you can find in the description the link to it so let us now proceed and start the integration process to integrate go to your firebase if you don't have account create a new account and then we are going to add a new project so add new so the project name we are going to say is book manager and then we have continue click continue here you will select the account i'm going to select my account and then create project so the project is creating wait provisioning resources finishing up your new project is ready proceed now we are working on android application so i'm going to click this one and here i'm going to provide the android package name so the package name is located within your manifest file and here it is so copy it and paste it here and then the nickname we can provide it or not it's a an optional field so we are going to say book manager debugging signing certificate so for this one go to your gradle then go to apps android signing report and here we have our share one copy it and then paste it here register your application so now download the google service.json it's going to download open this one copy it and then paste it within your application folder paste it then click next the next uh, item is to add for base sdk so we can close this one so uh, what we need to do on our project level that is build gradle the project level is this one we need to make sure that we have the following we have uh, google and marvin central so these ones we can look at the settings if we don't find them at the project level check at the settings and as you can see we have both of them and we also have here uh, google and marvin central so then add the dependency for google service gradle plugin so we need this one and we are going to add it in our project level build gradle so here then i'm going to add it 
can remove these ones. Remember, anytime you edit Gradle script file, you have to sync your project. So I'm going to finish uh, adding and then we can sync all together. Then you need to, uh, to look, make sure that you have the following. We have already checked and we have them. Then in our app level, we need to add Google service Gradle plugin. So copy this one. This is the app level. And here we are going to add our Google service plugin. And then import Firebase BOM and add the dependencies for Firebase product. So we need these two copied. And then we are going to add them within our dependencies. So we can remove this one and this one. We are going to sync our project now. Let's see. Hmm. Let's sync again. So we have something here. Let's see. Plugin not allowed here. So we are going to check. We needed to start with build script. And then within our build script, that's where we have dependency. When you find such errors, don't panic. Just go and leave the documentation again and you're going to get it correct. So as you can see here, build successful. Now, since the build is successful, all we have to do is click next and we can finish up. So now our project is well integrated with Firebase. So the next thing that we are going to look into is how to authenticate a user using Firebase. Remember, we are going to use password and email. That is email, password, authentication using Firebase. So to do that, we are going to go back to our Firebase and we are going to do to click build authentication. Here, we are going to get started. We are going to select that we want to use email password authentication and then we are going to enable it and save it. Now we are going to go back to our application and create two activity, one for registration and the second one for login. And then we are going to add Firebase library that will allow us to register and login. So let's continue. We are going to begin by creating the register activity. So to do that, go to your layout folder and then select new activity. And we are going to use empty activity. We are going to name this one register. Then we are going to click finish. As you can see here within our Java, then our package name. A package ID, we have the register activity that is Kotlin, and we have the XML here where we edit the UI. And then we are going to create another one, and this one we're going to call it so select new activity, empty activity, and this one will be login activity. So we have our register activity and we have our login activity.